Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's come into the spirit and the atmosphere of worship. Come on and let's worship and magnify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, for he is worthy. Come on, somebody say he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy. It's worthy to be praised. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here this evening. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When we look back at the week that has passed and all that has gone on, hallelujah, all we can say is to God be the glory because we have come out on the other side. Mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. Can I get somebody to say they have come out on the other side. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. We have come out on the other side. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come out on the other side. Amidst of whatever would have gone on this week. If you are hearing this message today, God has brought you out on the other side and he has brought you out all right hallelujah god has brought us out god has brought us over to the net into another week and we are grateful unto him so welcome wherever you're joining us from today we are so glad to have each and every one of you hallelujah welcome to james Ford. Ministries International, where we preach Christ crucified and resurrected as the main attention in our lives. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day, the redemptive work of Christ should be at the forefront of our minds. Oh, praise the Lord. Shall we go to the throne of God and pray, eternal God, our Father, we worship and praise your master's name. Lord, there is none like unto you. Father, when we consider the heavens above and the earth below, and Father God, we search the entire earth, we can find there is none like you. So today, Lord, we worship you in the beauty of holiness. Almighty God, today we pray that you would wash us and cleanse us. Father God, we will have fouled up around the week. Father, many of us might have fouled up today. But Father God, today we pray that you would wash us and you would cleanse us, God, from all unrighteousness. So today we can lift up holy hands and adore you. We lift up holy hands unto you, Lord. For God, there is none like unto you. So, Almighty God, as we are gathered here today for this service, Father God, I pray a special blessing on each one that shall hear this word. And Father God, today I pray that your spirit would be with us, that your anointing will fall, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that your anointing will fall and take care both of the spiritual and the natural. Mighty God, whatever your people are needed from you today, Father God, we pray that that need shall be met in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, to wrap us in your arms, wrap us in your arms, mighty God. Father God, today, I pray that your people would receive your word and would be obedient to your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to worship the Lord. It's time to worship the Lord. It's time to worship the Lord. We are going to worship the Lord with this song. Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord with this song. Turn it around. Turning it around. Hallelujah. I know my God will turn it around. Hallelujah. How many people believe that today? That our God, he will turn it around. Let's worship the Lord.
I know my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you weighed down by battles in life? Are you thinking of quitting the race? There is no need to give up on your journey because I know my God will turn it around. Have you suffered from disappointment? Have some people turned their backs on you? Just keep holding on to the one who cannot disappoint. I know my God will turn it around. Are you thinking that you are all alone? Do you feel God has forsaken you? He has promised to keep you to the end of your journey. I know, hallelujah, how many people know, I know my God will turn it around. I know my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. He has turned it around before. And I encourage someone today. He is turning it around for you this very day. Hallelujah. This very day, he's turning it around for you. My God, my God, will turn it around. There are so many, many times in life that has seen my God turn it around. And he's doing it all again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to get into the word of the Lord for today. And uh, our scripture is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And we're going to read uh, verses 1 to 6 and verse 14 to 20. And reading, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold sixty cubits high and six cubits wide, and set it upon the plain of Dula in the province of Babylon. He then summoned uh, provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald aloudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of all the kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into the blazing fire. Verse 14 to 20, and it says, And Nebuchadnezzar said, to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing fire. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? The Nebuchadnezzar did not know what he was asking. He does not know what he speaks of. What God will be able to rescue you from my, path, my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver and from your from your hand, he's able to deliver us from your hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know. Your we want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then the Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and throw them into the burning and I want to use as a subject, I will take a stand. Today, before I want to begin my message with a question, how far are you willing to go? And as I minister today, I want this question to be in the back of your head. With everything that I say today, I want you to ask this question, how far am I willing to go? Today's message is not an uncommon one, but actually a very popular passage of scripture. Today I would like for a second to change my topic into a question and ask, will you take a stand? Will you say I am sticking with and standing up for Jesus no matter what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have gotten up scared and bowed, but they said I am willing to die rather than denounce my God. How far are you willing to go? I would rather die in Shatorebe Castle. He said, I know my God can deliver me, but even if he don't, and if he did it, that was sure death. He said, I don't care if I die. I don't care if I... I don't care if I die, because I know I will be with my Lord. I would rather die than to denounce my God. He says, I believe he said, and said to himself, if I denounce God, if I denounce God, I gain mortal life, but I lose eternal life. If I Denounce God and bow down, I will gain mortal life, but lose eternal life. They took the decision, I will take a stand. The thing with the church nowadays is that we're so wishy-washy and we're not willing to take a stand. But any and everything that comes to us, we are ready to bow down to. But in a day and age like this, that this is the last days, God is calling for a church that will take a stand. So my question again to you today, Will you take a stand? If we were to look at this from a pros and cons list, it was 70 years of mortal life versus an eternity in hell. And I don't know about you, but any right thinking human would stop there and say, I want eternal life. I would rather live eternally than just 70 years. Would have said in a couple of moments of persecution versus everlasting peace and joy. And it all comes down to this. Heaven or hell. It says in Matthew 10, 33. Oh Lord, give me strength. Now. Hallelujah. 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 Give me strength. Hallelujah. It says Matthew 10, 33. But everyone who 
denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. This says to me that it pays to take a stand. We have to look past time and look to eternity. We get so caught up. We're living life down here. But we are living this life to live the next. So we got to look past time and look in to eternity. If many Christians would take that second over the castle and would take that second, if any Christian would take that second, oh, a lot of things that Christians get accused of would not happen. Help me God. Help me God. Wouldn't it be true on earth? Has eternal value. And if believers would just get this, we would have better Christians. Today I'm not going to get on this stream and uh, tell you that it is going to be easy. Especially with the stakes that the three Hebrew boys had. They had the threat of death. Yes, there will be the human nature that, that will step in and visit doubt. But we have to be fully persuaded that God will take care of God will work it out how he sees better. We need Christians, we need so no Christians, ah, yeah, 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 that are fully persuaded. Even if our life is on the line. Oh, my God. Let me look at all the early apostles died. I don't think, from my recollection, that any of them died by natural causes. They died as martyrs of the gospel. Nowadays, we have apostles. All they want is a comfy office to sit down in. And a few members to lead. But they are not willing to go out there and say, If I die, I die. We need some people that are fully persuaded. We need people that are fully persuaded, fully sold out. The church is lacking people that would go out into the world. Oh, Ramasiki, Ricato Ramansi, Ricato Ramosi. We are, the church is by now the people that will go out in the fields and say, Man, I die, I die, but I'm going to make sure that I fulfill my mission. I'm going to make sure that I carry out the gospel of Jesus. This attitude and that mindset will not come overnight, uh, uh, but it is a process, uh, a growth process, uh, a growth of faith and trust, uh, a growth of courage uh, and growth of relationship with Christ. Uh, so then let's come up with a definition uh, of growth process to help us have a better understanding of the process that we need to go through. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Process is uh, defined as a series of actions or, or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Growth is planned development. 
Both process then can be described as the series of actions taken towards a planned development. God does not desire for you to stay at baby stage, to stay at the same way you were when you first came to Christ. But he expects us to grow. He has a development plan for us. Let's look at this plan development. It is the will of God that we develop, that we trust in more than our faith is developed. This is the plan development that God has for us that it gets to the point where God says move and we say will. Not why. We like to question God too much. If God says need, our answer should be where? Hallelujah. 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 But we want to know. We want to know how. If God says move, move. And not, you don't want, I don't know, God, I am not too sure. He wants total submission. Not that he wants passive people, but he wants a people that listen closely to his voice and will be born for him. How do we get to this place of developed faith and trust? Faith being the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The evidence, this is where a developed faith and trust come from. This comes from the reading of God's word and the testimony of other believers. But the things God, by the things God has done for others, we know that our God is unchanging. So by the word of the testimony, it helps us trust and believe in God more. Hallelujah. Does this sound right understand? I have seen my God done it before. I have seen my God done it before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without miracles, signs, wonders happening today, it would just be words on paper. Without the evidence of miracles, signs, and wonders, this Bible would just be words on paper. But the very fact that God is still moving, that God is still working. Hallelujah. Without evidence in the world today, the power of God would just be a curiosity, and then the faith of the believer would be limited to paper. But the very evidence of God working in the earth strengthens our faith. For we can't see God, but we know that he exists and he is here for us by the evidence of his power even today. His power is shown more than the earth by, yes, miracles, signs, and wonders, but he also uses his ministers that he endures with power to preach, his prophets to prophesy, and what he enables them to do through his spirit. So to sum up that, our developed faith and trust comes from all the power of God evident today. So let's look at our scripture for today. To sum up the first verses, what Nebuchadnezzar was really saying, deny your God, give in to the pressure of wanting to fit in with those around you, because you can imagine, he hold this big party. Let's say some place as big as for those here with no in Barbados, but don't say Kevin to the old woman and have all the there filled with people. All on the field and everything. Have it filled with people. 
and then to just and everybody bowing, and then to see three boys just standing. It is easy to want to fit in with those around us and to do what they do and bow and compromise. Today, will you bow or will you take a stand? Sometime you will have to stand alone. Will you take a stand? Will you give in to the pressure of those around you? And who fear of sticking out and being outcast or, or even persecution now? Or will you take a stand? First Corinthians 10.13 tells us no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out that you can endure it. The desire to bow and to give in to temptation and to compromise and to fit in. To stem from my main scripture, I want to speak about external pressure. People talk about prayer pressure. We want to talk about external pressure. Temptation is the struggle to obey God's word, along with having the desire to give into the pressure of sin. That is temptation. Temptation is the struggle between obeying God's word and the desire to give in to sin. If it was just you going to give in to sin, that would not be temptation. But in that struggle, when I to obey God's word or when I give in to sin. Obeying God is always smart. This obeying God to please others is always stupid. As I would have alluded to before, this is exactly it. In this stem, in this dream, uh, let's look at Joseph, who was tempted every day by Potiphar's wife to sin with her. But he decided to obey God and refused to get into her temptation. Genesis 39. Hallelujah. Joseph, there are six principles that we can learn from Joseph. It says, Joseph stayed as far away from evil, from the cliff of sin, as possible. Genesis 39.10 tells us, and though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Sometimes we just need to move away and, uh, and avoid the thing that is causing us temptation. We want to overcome, but we still want to be in the situation. Today, God is calling you out of that situation. And he learned to say no. That's Genesis 38, 39, 8. And this is explanatory. Just self-explanatory. Just say no. But it is easier said than done. This is something that we need to pray about. That our, that our faith is increased. It will become easier to say no. We need to stay or they say no. And Joseph considered the consequences ahead of time. Sometimes we just do, but we don't consider the consequences. I believe that Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Obegnigo would have considered the consequences because that I did that talk to me said that they considered their consequences ahead of time. And they said to themselves, if I bow, I displease God. But if I will not bow, my God will bring me out. Joseph hated sin because he knew it to be great wickedness. Understanding what sin is and understanding when it presents itself. And it's Joseph's love for God was greater than the enjoyment of sin. Uh, our devotion to God and our commitment to God will just not allow us to do certain things. Our commitment and devotion to God just will not allow us to do certain things. And Joseph ran from sin. Second Timothy 2 Two twenty two says Leave the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the name of the Lord with a pure heart. Leave from the desires of sin and follow after God. We will all face pressure and temptation. But we need not to give in to temptation by, by keeping close to God and asking Him to help us. Our resolve must be, I will take a stand. They decided to take a stand and God brought them up. This is going back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They decided to take a stand and God brought the results. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. Yes, but God was there in the middle of the fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The man... The men who threw them in even saw four men in the fire. The men that threw them in even saw four men in the fire. When we put ourselves up there for God, He will be with us even when the fire gets seven times hotter. Daniel 3. 25 to 27 says, he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unarmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. The brutal Nazareth then approached the, the opening of the blurred, blurred blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God! Hallelujah! Your enemies are going to have to turn around and worship your God. To the end, they don't give up on God. Don't give in. Don't compromise. Stand up for God. Servants of the most high God. He wanted them to bow down to his gods. But then he saw that they were walking around in the fire. I am all bound. Mighty God. Mighty God. When he saw them. He could shout the servant of the most. Hi God. Come out. Come here. So Shadrach. Almighty oh, God. Be Shadrach. And the back they go. I tell you God was in the midst. Our God is a mighty lever. He's a mighty keeper. And the royal advisors crowded around them. And they saw that the fire. Woo! The fire had not harmed their bodies, nor a spear singed on their head. My God, their robes were not scorched, nor snuffed. Today I tell you, if you stand up for God, put your trust in. 
and take a stand for Him. No matter what will come your way, God will bring you out. I'm talking to you today, God will bring you out, no matter what. If you take a stand for Him, He will bring you out unharmed, untouched. And all those around you will know that you are a child of the most. They trusted and believed in God, and God brought them the result. Today it pays not to bow. It pays to take a stand. Today I will ask you again the question, will you take a stand? When the pressures of life arise, will you take a stand? Or will you say, I am fully persuaded that God will carry me through and bring me out victorious? Not down in the dumps, not scorched, but on arm that will touch. Today, let it be your resolve that I will take a stand. No matter what people want to do to get you to compromise and to give up on God, I encourage each and every one of you, don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God, saints of God. Don't give up on God. He will bring you out. All you got to do is take a stand for Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today, as we are getting ready to close our service, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here today. We praise God that you have taken the time out to join with us and to hear what God will say unto us. So oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So at this time, I want to pronounce the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord let the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. This day and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll see you again next Sunday evening for our Sunday evening service. God bless. See my God turn it around There are so many